Hey, friends all over the world. Listen, I know this message is critical and urgent. The last time I just tried to post it, there was no sound for no reason. No, no explainable reason. There was no sound. And this is something that tells me that the enemy don't want you to hear this. He don't want you to hear what I'm about to say to you. There was no sound. So I know this is my second attempt to make this message. And I need you to hear this with all of your heart. This is an urgent warning. The Antichrist is rising. The Antichrist is rising. Hear me. Hear this urgent warning. The Antichrist is rising. And you must not be deceived in these last days. I want to give you an eschatological understanding eschatology simply means the study of the end times the study of last things and i want to give you a proper hermeneutical understanding of where we are i need you to hear me with all of your heart the antichrist is rising and this may not be the way you think it is but you need to understand it i would encourage you to share this with everybody that you know you know, as I was praying and I was really seeking the Lord, the Lord was speaking to me about the spirit of Antichrist. I've done messages about this before. I've shared about this before. But there is a new sense of urgency. There is a new sense of zeal that we must approach this with. And I'm telling you, in the times we're living in, discerning of spirits is going to be your greatest weapon against the spirit of deception in the land today. There is great deception proliferating in the land, proliferating in the culture, proliferating in the media, proliferating in the church. In fact, that brings me to my point. When we look at scripture, I know a lot of times people talk about the book of Revelation, which was written by the apostle John after he was banished to the Isle of Patmos, which was basically... A, a deserted island, like a prison island that people were exiled to off the coast of Turkey, and uh, which was known as Asia Minor at the time. And he has this revelation. But understand, before he writes the book of Revelation, he addresses the Antichrist in his three epistles. Particularly one of the three epistles is where he talks the most about the Antichrist. In fact, this antichrist that john references in his epistle to the church is not talking about something outside the church he's actually talking about something inside the church and he's not talking about one person or one man in fact scholars tell us that john the apostle is combating a very popular heresy in the first century known as gnosticism Gnosticism or Gnostic dualism, which was the belief that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh. He was not, in fact, a man the way we would understand it, but he was a spiritual being. And as a result, he was not the son of man. He did not come in the flesh. And, and John, the apostle, gives us a standard by which to judge authentic spirituality. He says anybody who does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is antichrist. They are not of God. They are antichrist. It's the Greek word antichristos. And this word is literally a word coined that means against Christ or that which opposes Christ, yet that which opposes Christ yet which is an imposter to Christ. It is against Christ, but it stands in the place of Christ. It emulates Christ, but not in the sense of the fruit of the Spirit, but it emulates Christ in form, but not in substance. And I'm going to tell you something. There is, right now, in the body of Christ, a resurgence, if you will, of the spirit of Antichrist, that Gnostic spirit 
that Paul the I'm sorry that John the revelator warned us about 2000 years ago and he said that even then there were many antichrist there were many antichrist meaning that there is there is a form of godliness Paul talks about that denies the power thereof and it is growing and we must discern it there are many expressions uh, that, re that that appear to represent Jesus, but they don't represent Jesus. There is spirituality without the Holy Spirit. There is Christianity without Christ. And this is dangerous. This is absolutely dangerous that people are representing themselves as believers and representing themselves as people of God and representing themselves as prophetic voices and, repre and representing themselves as apostles and leaders of the body of Christ and representing themselves as Christians. But there is no submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. There is no repentance. There is no holiness. There is no truth. And this is why the Bible says, Paul said that they will not endure sound doctrine. And the reason why people today cannot endure truth is because they are submitted to the spirit of this age. When, when you give them truth, it offends them. When you give them truth, they become bitter. When you give them truth, they reject the truth. This is what Paul the Apostle talks about in the book of Thess uh, in Thessalonians. And he talks about, he says that, that because they will not receive the love of the truth, that they may be sa saved, God gave them over to strong delusion that they should believe a lie. I'll tell you something that's interesting. One of the greatest forms of deception is self-deception. See, we've been looking for something outside the church. We've been looking for a man to come from Russia or a man to come from the Middle East. When we don't understand that the Antichrist, he is not just coming to the world, but he's coming to the church. He's coming to the church. He's in the church already. He's already in the church. He's already in the world. He's an imposter. He's an imposter. He's like the he's like the counterfeit knockoff. In fact, I remember I was traveling. I was traveling. I had to travel through Charlotte, North Carolina, one of the hubs. If you if you know about the United States, you know that you have to travel through Charlotte and you have to travel through Atlanta. And I was traveling through Charlotte and I was getting my shoes polished at the shoe sign station. And there was a man who was wearing a nice watch, a similar brand uh, that I own. And I was wearing the same brand of watch that he was wearing. And I was admiring his watch. And I said, man, that's a beautiful watch. I said, that's really, man, I would, oh, man, I said, that's my dream watch right there. He said, you know what, man? I said, what's that, sir? He said, the only difference between your watch and my watch is that your watch is real. And I said, what do you mean? He said, my watch is not real. He said, I bought it from China and I paid nickels for this watch. I, I paid nothing for it. He said, it's a total fake. And he took it off of his wrist and indeed, it didn't have the weight that it should have. It didn't have, it didn't have the substance that it should have. It was hollow. It was, it was cheap to the touch. And I recognize that that's the season that we're living in as believers. We are living in a season where things look the part. They look spiritual. They look prophetic. They look like the Holy Ghost. They look like God, but they're not God because they don't have the fruit of the spirit. They don't have the love of the truth. They don't have the righteousness. They don't have the fear of God. And this is why, this is why the Bible says, be not deceived. I'm going to break this thing down just a little bit further. I'm going to let you go. He says, don't be deceived, beloved. Don't be deceived. There are people doing things and they believe they're being led by the spirit of God. They believe that the Holy Spirit is the one instructing them. But what they're doing does not align with the word of God. 
What they're doing does not align. That's why what we're seeing today, look at what we're seeing in, in Christianity. Look at what we're seeing in the culture. Look at how we're seeing messages being diluted and watered down, look, diluted. And look at how we're seeing uh, 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 people. Uh, you're seeing such a great falling away. Folks that you thought were strong in the Lord and strong in God. After the pandemic, people just start falling off. And the, and the profession of their faith, the values and the ideologies that you thought they held, they don't hold them. They don't hold them. The things that you thought they believed, they don't believe. And here's another thing that I'm seeing. Generals of the faith are being inflicted and infected with Saul syndrome. Meaning that they started out good. They did run well, but who hindered them that they should not obey the truth? Paul talks about this in Galatians, referring to the Judaizers, and he calls their false teaching witchcraft, their legalism, witchcraft, that people are saved by works. Now people are saved by theological degrees. And men and women of God who once were anointed and once who walked in the power of God, who once could declare the word and people get up out of wheelchairs, all they're now doing is philosophizing and prognosticating and having intellectual debates, but they're not doing anything with any power. There's no power. That's what the Bible says, that they'll have a form of godliness with no power, no dunamis, no dynamite, no explosive power, no healing, no deliverance, nobody set free. Nobody, nobody goes in and comes out changed because we're, we're preaching psychobabble from the pulpit. We're preaching motivational speeches and psychology. I mean, I'm just watching somebody that admire, and they're just a psychologist. We've got preachers that are psychologists, and they're not, they're not bringing people to the cross. They're bringing people to Freud, and they're bringing people uh, to, 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 to Pazlov's, and they're bringing people to Maslow's. And they're bringing people to all of the pop psychology, but they're not bringing people to the blood of Jesus. They're not bringing people to the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is what is happening. And this is why we must be diligent in this hour. Everybody that speaks in tongues is not full of the Holy Ghost. Everybody that says they have a word is not hearing from God. We got witches in the pews. We got, we got, we got uh, false and counterfeit spirituality. We got preachers promoting ancestral worship and divination from the pulpits. It is no marvel, friends, because even Satan masks himself, transforms himself into an angel of light. It is no marvel then that his ministers can do the same. Are right, you listening to what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell this, I'm talking to pastors right now. You need to beware because Satan is sending people into your churches. The devil is sending his agents into your churches and they're not members, they're dismembers. I tell people all the time, some people didn't come to be a member. Some people came to dismember you, to cut your head off, your arms off, your legs off, to disconnect the body of Christ, to sow strife, division and discord. They are not of God. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. And you need to recognize and listen, people may not understand your rebuke and they may not understand your veracity and they may not understand your urgency and they may not understand how, how, why you preach so strong, but it is because we are living in very perilous times. This is not to scare anybody because the good news is we win. We win because Jesus rose from the dead. We win because death could not hold. Jesus. We win because he defeated the grave. He spoiled principalities and powers and made a shoe of them openly. I'm telling you, friends, you need to be diligent. You need to be alert, sober. Time out for being offended. Time out for being distracted. Time out for being caught up in foolishness. It is time for the generals. It is time for the soldiers to get back on their post. It is time for intercessors to start interceding again. It's time for prophets to start prophesying again. It's time for pastors to start pastoring again. It's time for evangelists to start evangelizing. It's time for teachers to start teaching. It's time for you to get back in the game. Get back on the battlefield. Some of you who have been sidelined by circumstances and sidelined by the 
by the cares of this world. It is time for you to come back to your first love. God bless you, friends. Remember, Jesus is Lord.